I never like being called a streaming influencer. I, I don't know, but today I'm here to announce my retirement from a project that was downloaded almost half a million times by fellow data fans and share with you the next steps on how you can save that project. I feel like an influencer now announcing the end of a six year old project of mine with a five minute video. But yeah, that's because six years ago, I wrote my very first Vue.js web app in a week for a tech event. It was for a game similar to Google Quick Draw, where you need to draw as many sketches as you could from a large doodling database. I spent an entire day to set up Webpack, which bundles HTML and JavaScript files together. I used Fabric.js to display a drawable canvas, TensorFlow.js to embed a pre-trained model to classify doodles, and eCharts to plot the prediction probabilities. The game was a big hit in my tech event and I was able to present TensorFlow and deep learning to a lot of developers and even my top management. And this is why I want you to build more data and machine learning web apps to show to the world and get the recognition you deserve. But I sympathize with every of you who has to quickly learn modern web development to put together this kind of demo. So when Streamlit approached me four years ago to help launch their new components feature, a plugin system that enabled us to integrate any front-end component into Streamlit, I came back to this project and split my web app into two components, the drawable canvas and the eCharts component. Streamlit launched components in the year 2020 with both my components for launch day and they became like instant hit. I stumbled upon countless demos using my drawable canvas from drawing Voronoi areas over a soccer field to a doodle to Pokemon recognition Pokedex. And I can't even show you a demo or a video replay because Twitter X can't replay videos from four years ago. More developers wanted to contribute to this project or were submitting GitHub issues. But because there were no unit tests, because it's hard to put unit tests on streaming components, I never really had the time to dive into the code changes and the pull requests to manually verify that everything worked properly. It gained the attention of too many people. So many people. <laughs> for a project, I didn't really plan to grow after its launch. Four years after the release, my life has changed. By that, I mean we are not homestuck anymore because of a pandemic. I'm back into regional badminton competitions. I started a YouTube channel, which you should subscribe to for more Streamlit and Data Web Apps content. My YouTube gear led me into portrait and street photography, which then got me into filming badminton competitions, local data science meetups, and corporate events for social media. I'm learning motion graphics for code explainer animations, which are doing pretty well on LinkedIn, my YouTube community, and my email newsletter. And I'm mentoring a few people on creating image carousels and editing video tutorials. I realized in those four years, I can spend my 4 to 8 a.m. every morning thinking of educational videos and animations around data, web or AI to inspire you, but I don't have that same morning urge to reflect on my Fabric.js technical depth, nor the latest streaming components feature to integrate into drawable canvas like component callbacks or dark mode integration. And this lack of motivation compounded for four years in my mind until one day... Therefore, if you contributed a merge request or messaged me about drawing an e chart in Streamlit, you probably noticed I didn't answer for a year, so you half expected it, but I'm making it official today. I'm here to announce I'm stopping development for those two components. So what's next, especially for Streamit Durable Canvas? Because you know, half a million downloads, <coughs> they will stay on PyPy and you will still be able to install them. But after all, many of you are still using those without any issues, even without any update for two years. Plus I don't really have a choice because what's published on PyPy stays on PyPy. However, I'll be archiving the GitHub source code in September, October to show it is no longer actively maintained. You're free to fork it, to rebuild the project with the newest features. I personally won't be touching the code base anymore as of now. Now, if you're scared about the future of drawing with Streamlit, do not worry. I have been talking with the Streamlit dev team about adding drawable canvas as a native feature. And, and this is where this is where I 
put my Streamlit Influencer hat. If you currently are using Streamlit Drawable Canvas, please vote for the GitHub issue in the description below. Because just like chart selections, multi-page apps and dialogue windows were added because they were the top voted issues, there's a chance that a drawable canvas gets added if it becomes a top voted feature. Also, the team is aware I'm giving up on the project, so it's now or never. I'm counting on you if you want your future colleagues to build a Doodle Pokedex in Streamlit 2. <laughs> uh, finally, one of the reasons I'm giving up on Drawable Canvas is I found an awesome alternative. If you are a regular on this channel, you should know about Gradio from the Hugging Face ecosystem. It features a native Drawable Canvas that is infinitely better than mine. You can draw on it, add a background image like in Streamlit, but also use multiple layers, erase strokes and react to events, for example, to update the image with a generated one from a hugging face model. It's everything I dreamed of for my component, so yeah, give it a shot. That's it for this small video. In the meantime, a post I did about multi-page apps and authentication is doing well on social media, and now people are asking for a video, so I have to research Auto and Firebase authentication, so yeah, maybe that's my next video. I'll see you around. Bye!